let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the music of our prayer. to please rise for our call to worship. Come into God's house and see what God is creating. We have come to worship God and to see God's new creation. God's creation has been marred and is flawed. We weep with God over the spoiled creation. God desires to reclaim it and make it new again. Praise be to God who redeems creation. The marred bit of creation is you and me. We know we are not what God intends us to be. Let us open our lives to the God who would renew us. Our lives are God's. May God make of us what seems right in the wisdom of the Most High. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes
God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. And in Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Earth and All Stars, hymn 731. pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. may be seated for the hearing of gospel. First lesson is from the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. 
I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We continue with our psalm, Psalm 96, read responsively by whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. As for all of the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second lesson is from the first chapter of First Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us 
from the wrath that is coming. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise and honor the gospel. According to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Y'all can be seated. Do we have any kids who'd like to come up today for kid sermon? Alice, you want to come up? So when we were on our way to church this morning, we saw that something was happening outside on those trees. What's happening on those trees? They are green. They are green. Yes. What kind of colors? You see yellow. You saw some green. What else? Any other colors? Orange. Orange. You saw some yellow. I saw some red. Lots of orange. They're really bright. And that is, leaves do match your rainbow dress. Just like the leaves. We didn't see any blue. We saw blue in the sky. So when we see these leaves changing, what does that mean? They're changing different colors. It's kind of getting cold outside. Fall. Yeah, the leaves are falling and it's fall. And we get to see all of this beautiful stuff around us, right? It also means that pretty soon another season is going to be with us. I'm going to say it. Brace yourselves. (laughs) Winter. You guys like winter? Yeah, what's your favorite part about winter? What else? You like going sledding? That sounds like a ton of fun. We live in the mountains, so there's always a good place to go sledding, right? And then after winter comes what season? Halloween. Halloween. (laughs) A little bit before Halloween, we see spring, and that's when all the leaf trees will get their leaves again, and the flowers will come out, and then it'll be summer, and we'll see sunshine, and everything will be exciting. We'll be out in the warmth. We get to go swimming. Each one of these seasons has something that's really special about them. And they look different, but we get to see the beautiful things that God has made every time in the year. And I think that's awesome. That no matter what time of year it is, we always know that we can see something awesome and beautiful that God has made. 
you know another thing that's awesome and beautiful that God has made? church family. Everybody here. We get to celebrate that everybody here is just as beautiful and awesome and made by God as those trees with beautiful leaves and those snowmen that are made of that beautiful snow. So, will you help me say a prayer and give thanks to God for all the beautiful things and people in our lives? Okay, let's pray. Friends, let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for everything that is beautiful around us that reminds us that you're with us and that you love us and that you love everybody that we see as well. Keep us safe this week and help us to enjoy the season of fall in Halloween. We pray all this in Jesus' name. <coughs> Thank you, guys. You can go back and sit down. Or you can do one just back here. There you go. We are definitely in a mindset of Halloween, so I'm not surprised that got brought up. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Well, first off, before I get to uh, my regularly scheduled announcement, I just want to say that Ben and I, our family, we always give thanks for you guys. Um, we are thankful for your witness, the way that abundance flows out of this congregation. And not all congregations can be excited when there are kids who are running around and making noise. Can I play with her? Yes, yes, go say hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's right back there with her mama. Go say hi. There you go. She's good at making friends. Um, but it is such a gift. And it, it's a gift for me because not everywhere that I go with the kids can I just be like, okay, she's gonna be, she's gonna be fine. You guys are gonna be fine. We're all gonna be fine. Some of you have gone through this before with your own, you know. Um, but thank you. That is a gift from God that you guys offer this community and, and the people who worship here. So thank you. Um, but anywho, let's get to that gospel lesson. Whew, yeah, thanks. Pastor Dan, you had to choose the emperor and the coin one for this week. Ben had to be gone this week. And so here I am. Um, money. Ooh, that's a topic that makes us feel uncomfortable in church, doesn't it? Or anywhere, but especially when we get into church. Um, and I wanted to start by sharing with you one of my first lessons about money. It also is one of the most embarrassing and traumatic experiences of my teenage life. <laughs> they coincide. And it happened at my sister's baby shower for her first son. I was 13 years old. And I was awkward, but I was excited because this wasn't just any party. This was my sister's baby shower. I was going to be an aunt. We get to celebrate my sister. And, you know, that's basically, that's one degree of separation. It was a party for me, too. Who was I kidding? <laughs> I was so excited. The food, the games. And at 13, I felt I was finally old enough where I could be part of that excitement. I could be one of those special people that gets to help out. And the important role that I was given was gift announcer. I was the one who, as my sister opened a gift, got to share with everyone there what that item was. I had grown up watching Vanna White. Like, this was it. I have made it, right? It was perfect. So there were all sorts of different items that my sister opened up. She had a onesie, and so I announced the name of the gift giver and introduced for the people in the black, hey, it's an elephant onesie, right? I loved it. There was a bottle. So I displayed it with all my pride, that cute and practical baby bottle. I shared the name of the gift giver and I shared the next item, a gift of a book. I said, oh, this is the name of the book. This is what's on the cover. And then of course there were some gift cards and some checks. So, like I had been doing the entire time, I took that first check and I said, this check is from so-and-so and they gave $25. <laughs> You're laughing because you know. <laughs> I did not. It was with that announcement that I was fired. <laughs> you would have thought I dropped a baby or burned down a nursery because one of my sister's in-laws turned on her heel and with a face that I will never forget, told me I was done sharing because you never announce the
the amount of a gift. That was my first cultural lesson in money. We don't talk about it, ever. You may mention it to your closest family, but even among friends and extended family, you have to tread lightly when you ask questions about your possessions, right? I hope you don't mind me asking, but we're looking for a house, and we love yours, we love that neighborhood. We were wondering if you don't mind sharing, how much do houses run in that neighborhood? Ooh, anybody get uncomfortable just thinking about that, right? <laughs> or, you know, you don't have to share if you're not comfortable. We're just trying to figure out, like, what's a reasonable price to buy for this model car? It's, a, it's our first. What did you, if you don't mind sharing, what'd you pay for that? <sighs> Those are questions that fill me with so much anxiety and dread. But also legit questions, especially if you're a first time home buyer or you're moving to a new place or you're trying to figure out what does a car cost these days? You don't wanna get ripped off, right? But meanwhile, there are a million questions that people feel really comfortable asking, like, when are you getting married finally? Or when's that baby coming around? Have you tried going on this diet yet? Or any other extremely personal questions that I would advise we really don't ask. But we don't talk about our money or the things that we use to buy with it because it's a private matter, because it's mine. One of the biggest illusions that we carry every day is this thought that everything that we have and all that we are and have grown into being is ours. That the money that I bring home and a paycheck is mine. That that car I worked for and I drive is mine. That that phone is mine. Get your own, kiddo. <laughs> that the house or apartment I rent or buy is mine. That the abilities and the ideas that I bring to the table are mine. And we can feel very possessive over that. I know I do. When all of a sudden someone, you have a really great idea and someone else brings it up and then everybody thinks their idea is great, right? But that was mine. I worked for it. I worked for that money. I worked on those skills that I needed to be proficient at my job. I put in the time and energy to earn that car or the phone or the clothes or the body or that investment or the paycheck. Sometimes we even write our names on our underwear. Isn't that weird? Why? Because it's mine. <laughs> But as Christians, as those who strive to follow the way of Jesus Christ, we are constantly being brought in to check and rethink exactly who does all of this stuff belong to? Who owns it, really? We do work hard for our money. You work hard, but who gave you the skills to pay the bills? We have our bodies, but who created humankind in their image? When we start to look at all that we own and all that we have and all that we are, as Christians, when we follow the trail, we find out and we remember and we profess that it really isn't ours, but it's God's. All that we have, the places we live, the bodies we wear, it's not ours. They are things that belong to God and that are entrusted to us to take care of and use as their rightful owner would want. Have you ever borrowed something um, from a friend? Maybe you needed to, I don't know, maybe you did need to borrow a car. And as you're driving it around, that's probably the best you will ever take care of a car, right? It's not gonna get dirty. <laughs> you're gonna drive the speed limit. You're not gonna brake too fast because you know it's not yours. And so you're gonna take that extra care because you don't wanna, I don't know, mess up total what someone else has entrusted to you. I heard uh, this theologian, he was a professor who taught up at Trinity Seminary in Ohio, and he explained it this way. Um, sometimes he'll go on a trip with his wife and he'll need someone to house sit they'll have a student from the seminary come over. And maybe you've had someone house sit or pet sit before. 
And if you're anything like at least Mark Allen Powell, you hope that the person you invite into your home is gonna take really good care of your stuff. Heaven forbid, you hope that your dog is going to be alive when you return, right? Those are the horror stories that make me never dog sit. <laughs> but it's this idea that we want whoever is taking care of us or our things or our children, that we want them to take care of them to the best of their ability, to use them wisely. Yes, have, help yourself to the food in the fridge, but I would like a few groceries when I come back, right? But then if you came back from that vacation, someone was house-sitting your house, and you found out that the locks on the doors were changed, and that that person decided they're not gonna leave because they say it's theirs, it belongs to them, you're probably gonna call the police, right? <laughs> That's, or, or other things, but call the police, I'd recommend, because it's not really theirs. It's your house that you entrusted them to care for. It still belongs to you. You are sharing it for that week. And I think that's a lot how God is with us, that everything we have, everything we've done, everything we are, it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God, the one who has created us in God's image. And we are, quite simply and quite profoundly and amazingly, as messed up as we can be, entrusted to take care of this world before us to use it as the rightful owner would want us to. So then how do we live that out? I mean, hopefully that's what we're thinking about when we debate different ideas and policies and all that, but Jesus makes it pretty clear in the Bible, sell what you have and give it to the poor. Give what you have, what you say is mine, and prove that it's not. Show in your discipleship that your possessions do not possess you, that what you fear and love and trust and put your safety in the most is not the security of a car and a house and a bank account, but God. And did you notice that it's not sell what you have and keep the profit for a rainy day? It's not sell what you have and invest the rest. That's a challenge for us. I don't have answers for it, but I'm saying it makes us think, right? Jesus says, sell what you have and use your money as the rightful owner would, as God would, by giving it to those in need. A lot of times when this passage comes up, we, we think about stewardship, and then that has a whole baggage. But we limit the conversation to money, and especially giving money to the church, right? But that, I don't think, is what it's all about. Following Jesus and being good stewards is about thinking faithfully about everything that we have in our lives, everything that we are, and thinking, how is the Holy Spirit leading me to use and give this gift to others? How do we use things the way their rightful owner would? So think about that for a second. Think in your life, when you wake up, what are the things you see around you? What do you have? Clothes? You all do. Thank you for doing that for church today. <laughs> Time? You also do. You're here in church today. Energy? A place to live? A pet? Food? Talents? What does it look like when we look at all of these gifts and think first and foremost, how is the Holy Spirit calling me to use these as God would want? And would you use them differently than you're using them now? It's not a bad thing. We're all learning and growing. I know I would. When I think that the house that I have is actually God's entrusted to me, I take care of it a little bit differently. I'm going to tell Ben that because I remember that our car is God's, I'm going to take care of it a little bit better. <laughs> to think that the time we have in a day belongs to God that it is a gift, not a countdown. Perhaps I'd use it more intentionally. To think that my ability to stand or to take a breath or to sing is not just because of this body and the gifts that I have, but because these have been things I've been given to use for the glory of God, maybe I'd use it more for worship. Maybe I'd take care of it better. 
As we seek to grow and follow Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, that is the discipleship challenge before us today. How can we use the things that we have been entrusted to care for, our time, our talents, our money, to worship God with our body and our mind and our strength and our heart? How can we enact in the way that we live and talk to others this truth that we believe that God is the one who's given it to us and that we are merely caretakers in the moment? How can we have deeper and richer lives removing the claim that our possessions have on us, the way that they control us, and instead live into the claim that God has placed on us, that we are beloved children, that we belong to Christ. Because here's the thing about our gospel lesson. When Jesus is talking about the things that are the emperors, talks about the tax, whatever, at the end of the day, the emperor does not care The empire does not care if we live or we die. They care that we pay our taxes. That is true. (laughs) They don't care if we have happiness and fulfillment. They care that we go the speed limit, that we don't hurt one another, that we don't get arrested, that we pay our taxes, and that we keep things simmered down and not causing too much trouble. But when God invites us into that relationship where we are called to be in relationship and give to God what is God's, the end result is not, okay, you've stayed in line, but you have life. That you are more than these things. That our hope is not in something that will lose its value or go away, fall apart become ruined, but in something that is sure and steadfast, that will be there for and with us when times get tough. Ben could have even said this in one of his sermons with you. One of the things that struck him the most, uh, you guys, many of you may remember Grandma Alice, and when she was a strong woman, and she was fabulous, and she lived a robust life of love. And at the very end, she knew that the only thing she had left was God. That the only thing that we can rely on in the end is not the clothes on our backs, or even the best doctors in the world, but on the fact that God will hold us through that. Our trust is in the one who owns everything. And that gives us hope. As you think about all that your life holds, the beauty and the challenges, may you remember that God holds you as well. May you talk about things that are uncomfortable, like money and possessions and our abilities. May we talk about that at church. Because here at church, more so than any other place around us, is where we can remember the one who has given it to us, the one who owns it, and the one who loves you and thinks, you know what, I'm going to entrust this to you. May this be a place where we can talk about those hard things and remember the one who's going to take care of us. Amen. Trust in bombs that shower, destroy.
destruction through the night from pride of recent station and blindness to your way deliver every nation eternal God we pray Lord strengthen of days when war shall cease, when hatred and division give way to love and peace. Till dawn the morning glorious, when truth and love shall reign, and Christ shall rule victorious Please rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in a God who hears us and cares for us, we lift up our prayers for the world and all in need. God, our creator, we give you thanks for the rain that nourishes, for the sun that gives growth, for the wind that blows leaves off of the trees. Help us to care for all that you have given us, for our little place on this planet. And we pray for those who are caretakers in other ways, especially those who work in our parks. We pray, O oh God of the nations, that your wisdom and your love pervade every aspect of our life as a global community. Our hearts are heavy with the suffering of others, and we pray that you will guide us in whatever ways we can contribute to peace and harmony. We ask your wisdom and your compassion on all leaders. God of the cross, you are full of compassion and you are near to those who are hurting. We especially lift up to you those who are in end of life situations. We pray for Beth. We pray for those who are going into or coming out of surgery for Roger and Sally, for David. We pray for Dave and his continued healing. God, you are also with those who are in joy. And we give thanks for this time where Pastor Dan and Kathy could be with their friends and their family and that they could reconnect. Give them safe travels home and back to hear us, us here in LaVale. We also pray for Ben as he travels back from Pennsylvania. And God, you hold all that was and is and is to come. You hold the saints. And we pray for all of those who have gone before us. May you give peace to those who are grieving their loss and give us all hope in your promise of resurrection. 
All of these prayers we lift up to you, knowing that you hear us and that you are with us and that you are guiding us in being your answer to others' prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace however you feel comfortable.
Please rise. Let us join in prayer. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, O God, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the one body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Jesus invites you to his table. Come, eat, and live. Thanks. Amen. Thanks be to God.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, and the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, as you go about your week, remembering that all that you have belongs to God, and that all that you are belongs and is claimed and is loved by God. May the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you bless you now and forever. Amen.